Tonight, we're going to take a look at a mystery that's baffled me since first hearing about it. About a group of young boys who head out into the woods looking for bird's nests and find something far more devious. Something that raises more questions than answers. I'm Enrique Kuto, the host of Weekly Spooky, and this is the story of who put Bella in the Witch Elm. Back in April of 1943, while World War II was causing chaos and hardship across Britain, a group of boys found themselves on an unexpected adventure. They had slipped into the Hagley Estate in Worcestershire, aiming to scavenge for bird nests, hoping to find something that could be added to their scarce food supplies. However, their quest took a shocking turn when Bob Farmer, clambering into the branches of an elm tree, stumbled upon something horrifying. What he initially mistook for an egg turned out to be a skull with flesh still clinging to it and hair that seemed to wave in the silent air. The sight of the crooked front teeth in the skull's grimace would haunt him for the rest of his life. Shaken to their cores, the boys swore to keep their macabre fine, a secret, fearing that they'd be punished for trespassing and possibly unearthing a grim crime. But secrets, especially those of this magnitude, are hard to keep, even though they had promised the youngest of the group eventually was overwhelmed by the gravity of their discovery. His parents were informed of what he and his companions had seen in Hagley Woods not long after he got home, and they promptly contacted the authorities. The police were soon combing through the area, where they found a woman's skeleton secreted away inside the hollow of the tree. The scene offered few leads. Some pieces of clothing and a counterfeit gold wedding ring were all that accompanied the remains. But then, the mystery deepened. Someone painted a message in the dead of night on a wall in Birmingham. Who put Ella down the witch elm? It asked. This question sparked one of Britain's most baffling, unsolved cases, a question that occasionally resurfaces through messages painted around Birmingham today. Theories about the case are many and varied, ranging from speculation that the killing had to do with witchcraft to guesses that Bella was a German spy caught behind enemy lines. No matter the theory, they all contribute to a legend that continues to grip the local imagination. Even 80 years after her remains were discovered in the eerie quiet of Hagley Woods, the pressing questions remain unanswered. Who was Bella? And who was responsible for her death? The story of Bella, as much as it is chilling, is also a poignant reminder of the mysteries that linger in our midst, sometimes hidden in plain sight, always whispering for justice. Dr. John Lund, a forensic biologist, was among those who first examined the hidden remains. His encounter with the case was a puzzle that lingered in his thoughts unresolved for the rest of his life. By the time he was 101 years old, in 2014, Dr. Lund reflected on the scant clues left by the elusive killer during an interview with the BBC. He remembered how perfectly the tree, located on a private remote property, served as a hiding place for the unfortunate woman. Given the condition of her remains, it was deduced she had been deceased for about 18 months before discovery. Described as being around 35 years old, with distinctive overlapping front teeth and possibly having been a mother, the nuances of her identity were as shadowy as the manner of her death. Dr. Lund and his team posited that she must have been placed inside the tree shortly after death, otherwise the stiffness of rigor mortis would have prevented such a concealment. A piece of peach-colored taffeta, torn from what was believed to be her skirt, 
was found lodged in her mouth, a grim hint that she might have been suffocated. This detail, coupled with the boy's account of who found her, stating they had inserted cloth into the skull's mouth, painted a murky picture of her final moments, stirring debate over whether her demise was the result of foul play. Despite the distinctive clues such as her teeth, efforts to identify her proved futile. The war drained resources and the forensic technologies of the era were limited to say the least, unable to match her description to any missing person reported across the region. Even the hope of DNA testing to unveil her identity in the modern era was dashed when Dr. Lund revealed an unsettling turn. The remains, once given to a university for study, had vanished without a trace. Confirmed by the West Midlands police, the woman's body was no longer in their possession, leaving the mystery of who she was and the identity of her killer, if indeed she was murdered, buried in the past. In 2018, a search for any official documentation relating to the case led nowhere, with police archives also confirming the absence of any records. Life in Hagley moved on, consumed by wartime preoccupations, but the story of the unknown woman refused to fade into obscurity. Months after the discovery, someone took chalk to an abandoned building near Hagley Hall, leaving a haunting question for all who passed by. Who put Bella in the Witch Elm? This cryptic message gave the unknown woman a name, Bella, igniting a spark of hope that the mystery surrounding her death might finally be unraveled. However, the trail went cold as quickly as it had heated up. The name Bella tantalized the minds of the curious, stirring rumors and speculation. Was the message from someone who knew the truth, or was it a red herring, a cruel joke to throw off the scant leads the authorities had? For a decade, Bella's story lingered in the shadows until Wilfred Byford Jones, writing under the guise of Quester, brought it back into the limelight. His series of articles, dripping with sensationalism, rekindled interest in the case, pulling it back from the brink of being forgotten. The renewed attention seemed fruitful when a woman identifying herself only as Anna reached out with a letter that painted a picture of espionage, illicit love, and madness. She hinted at a story so complex and twisted it seemed pulled from the pages of a spy novel. The true perpetrator, she claimed, was beyond any earthly punishment, having died insane in 1942. The victim, Bella, was a Dutch woman, drawn into a shadowy world that ultimately led to her demise. Authorities in Byford Jones urged Anna to come forward to shed light on the mystery but the truth remained as elusive as the woman herself. Byford Jones later recounted a mysterious meeting on a rainy night involving trapeze artists, spies, and a frantic search in a crowded inn, a tale as confusing as it was captivating. In a fascinating twist, a real-life Anna emerged, Una Hainsworth. She shared a haunting story of her husband, Jack Mossop, tormented by the memory of leaving a woman, presumably Bella, in a hollowed-out tree, thinking she would awaken and crawl out. But Bella never emerged. Plagued by guilt and driven mad by the haunting image of the woman he left behind, Mossop's life unraveled, ending in his death in a mental hospital before Bella's body was even found. In the mystery of Bella found in a witch elm, a chilling theory surfaced that might link her fate to dark magic. Some believed that Bella was part of a black magic ritual. This idea came from eerie similarities to old witchcraft practices, like her severed hand being scattered around, 
reminiscent of a grim ritual called the Hand of Glory. There is also a link to another strange case of a man named Charles Walton, found dead in a way that whispered of witchcraft. This, along with local legends about the plants in Hagley Woods being tied to the occult, made some think Bella's placement inside the tree was not by chance, but a ritualistic act, possibly as punishment from a hidden coven. Although this idea of witchcraft weaving into Bella's death intrigued many, the official investigation brushed it off, attributing the scattered hand bones to animals rather than anything supernatural. Still, the whisper of dark magic around Bella's final resting place keeps the mystery alive, shrouded in the unknown. Believe it or not, this story of Bella just gets stranger. Some folks thought she was a spy. Why? Because during the war, there was this woman, let's call her Anna, who told a newspaper that a girl named Bella was caught up in spy games, trying to help enemy planes find places to bomb. Turns out Anna was really Una, whose husband Jack knew too much. He saw Bella being strangled by a spy named Van Rolt, or at least, that's the story. But Jack's not around to tell it anymore. As we mentioned, he went crazy with nightmares about Bella and died before any of her bones were found. There is a twist, though, that we hadn't reached before. A real German spy named Joseph got caught, and he had a photo of a singer, Clara, who was his secret lover and might have been a spy, too. Joseph's story has it, she dropped into the area and just disappeared. But Clara was too tall to be Bella, and she actually died in Berlin around the same time. And when it comes to that Van Ralt guy, he was like a ghost, never found, adding more mystery to this sordid tale. The story of Bella doesn't end with spies and secrets and witchcraft. There's talk that Bella might have been someone without a fixed home, someone who slipped through society's net unnoticed in life and sadly almost forgotten in death. A radio show once whispered that Bella might have been a woman of the night, wandering the streets near Hagley Road, gone missing in 1941. This does fit our eerie timeline. Or maybe she was part of a group of travelers, with rumors suggesting her own community might have turned against her. Another murmur in the night supposes she could have been a local serving drinks and meeting a grim fate at the hands of an American soldier. But none of these stories hold up under a closer look. They're like shadows that vanish when you turn to face them. The most heartbreaking guess, though, was Bella was simply a woman that no one missed, someone who vanished without anyone to search for her. Years have turned into decades, and Bella's tale has tangled with the image of a creepy tree, a missing hand, and whispers of old magic and dark dealings. It's as if her story is a puzzle, missing half its pieces, leaving us with more questions than answers about who she was and the life she led. Now, all lost to time. Now, to shift gears to another mystery. Who was behind these enigmatic writings? The identity of the graffiti artist has remained as much a mystery as Bella's own. Some thought it could be the work of her killer, tormented by guilt. Others speculated it might have been an estranged lover or even a local youngster playing a morbid prank. One theory suggested it was a vendor arriving early in the city who had chosen an unusual canvas for their message. As time moved on, these messages were thought to be the work of imitators, yet they succeeded in keeping the mystery alive. In the village of Hagley, where the whispers of the past continue to linger, this old murder case has become a part of the local lore, though not something that deeply troubles the residents of today. Despite the years that have passed, 
there remains a glimmer of hope for resolution. In yet another interesting twist, researchers at Queen Mary University in London attempted to unlock this mystery using a method called Bayesian Network. This statistical approach suggested a high likelihood that Bella's death was due to foul play and proposed that she might not have been British. Among the suspects, Jack Mossop emerged with a noteworthy probability of involvement, followed by various theories about Bella's background and how she met her end. The quest for answers saw a significant moment in 2018 when a forensic reconstruction offered the world a glimpse of Bella's face, a face that had long been without an identity. It was a moment filled with anticipation. Would someone recognize her? Would this finally lead to answers? Yet, despite this effort to bridge the gap between the past and the present, the puzzle remained incomplete. Officially considered unsolved since 2005, the enigma of Bella and the Witch Elm continues to fascinate and haunt those who stumble upon her story, like you and me. It's a narrative woven from sadness, secrecy, and the eternal human desire for closure. As the search for truth marches on, Bella's story remains a testament to the mysteries that lurk in the depths of history, echoing the question that has yet to find an answer. Who put Bella in the Witch Elm?